Hi, everybody. Welcome to our webinar about the seven deadly Black Friday sins. My name is Drew, and I'm product manager here at Eggplant. Hi, uh, I'm James, and I'm in product marketing. Hi, I'm Alex. I'm a technical consultant here at Eggplant. All right, so that's the team. We want to talk about the seven deadly Black Friday sins, but more importantly, how you can avoid them. So today we're going to cover off how to avoid downtime. Obviously, very important, but equally, if not more important, how to avoid slowdowns. Yes. We're going to talk about how to maximize conversions because that's pretty much the name of the game. Talk about how to do this by gathering intelligence and more importantly, ultimately, delivering the best possible customer experience. So let's get started. Let's Good jump stuff. right into the first deadly sin. Customer wrath. Again, we're going to play loose and fast with these here, but customer wrath, the first deadly sin. James, let's talk a little bit about this. Yeah, so I think the first thing that we all need to make sure we get right is, is forecasting. So that's about making sure you know what's coming in and how it's coming in. What do you mean by that? So, uh, great question. So for me, that really means uh, if you're being driven by marketing, so you know, marketing is doing a social push, they're doing an email push, whatever campaigns they've got running, you understand what those campaigns are and how they're gonna bring in the traffic. Um, we all need to know the, the maximum concurrency or throughput that we need to deliver, um, but at the end of the day, how it comes in can be just as important because applications don't behave the same way under different conditions mm. uh, of load. So understanding whether you're gonna get sharp spikes, whether it's gonna be a smooth ramp up, whether you can expect you know, a kind of steady state of load over a long period of time, these things are really important to understand. I imagine it's probably important to know too which how your different devices perform on your website as well. Absolutely, yeah, indeed. So if you have uh, more than one way of delivering your application um, to different devices, then you need to absolutely understand um, the interaction with those at scale, uh, understand the load on, on, on the main devices, uh, and then replicate that as part of your testing, absolutely. Brilliant. So once you understand that, you know, what are some things you can do to mitigate the impact that these sort of, you know, big hits may have on your site? Is there something so, you please start off with? Or? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you always start uh, with planning, right? Uh, uh, and there's that old anecdote that if you uh, fail to plan, you plan to fail. So you need to make sure that you you understand um, who's meant to be where and, and when, um, how uh, you're going to make sure your application is prepared for load testing. And I'll, I'll come onto that in a moment in terms of what you can do to make sure you get uh, the most out of the process. Um, you need to be making sure that everyone is there who needs to be there during the load test. So it's all very well running a test, but if it's on a live site uh, or uh, an exact kind of replica pre-production system with the right bandwidth and everything in place, then what if something goes wrong? What if something goes down? What if you need to actively tweak during a test? You know, the best, the best load tests I've seen are those where everybody's on board and they're able to make quick changes to an application or an architecture to make sure, you know, you can deliver the best customer experience to the users, right? So, you know, planning is, is really important. Beyond that, then you need to make sure that you've got a plan for remediation and follow-on testing. Uh, and there's some other things as well that we'll talk about in a minute to make sure you do not necessarily at the end. We'll talk about it at the end of this, this, this yeah. uh, particular talk, but I think you know you need to consider them really from the start. So they've been included in this kind of planning phase. Sure, sure. Yeah, so that's interesting. So if you're in the cloud, for example, like in AWS or Azure, are there any sort of special considerations you should make for uh, entering and planning for holiday season? Absolutely. So just as you would with your own tin, your own server, or servers, clusters, whatever you've got, whatever architecture you have, you'd always plan to scale that architecture to meet the need that was coming your way for that load test, for that for that Black Friday peak, whatever it may be. And the same clearly applies to the cloud. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure that the, the resources are going to be available when you need them. That means planning. That means making sure they are available when you need them. Uh, it also means understanding that that these, you know, just because you have a cloud or you have a service like Azure or AWS, that that's not a fix all. It mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get a great availability or b great performance, great speed, great customer experience. All those things are interconnected. So, you know, if you're planning to scale up automatically on the day, then make sure that's tested. Make sure you've run through that and you've tried it again and again and again to make sure it works smoothly. Um, I've seen many low tests come to the point, especially those on, on Azure and AWS, come to the point where they, they, they do the test, they expect to scale, either in an automated or manual fashion, and something falls over. Mm. Um, they weren't ready for it, there is no contingency, uh, and they're stuck. Yeah. It delays the load testing, and, and, and more scarily, you know, if that happened in live, it could have been all sorts of problems for them. Absolutely. That's interesting, yeah. So, you know, you, you, we hear 
often about things like pre-scaling that sort of stuff to make sure you actually have the, the instances you need there on the day. Pay a little more upfront to make sure you have actually what you need there. Now, obviously that's one way to have a contingency. Are there any of the contingencies people can put in place to be ready for peak? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, you know, I think what I'll do, I'll start, I'll start with actually kind of before testing what we can do to try to mitigate the risk associated with a test or therefore live um, when it comes to when it comes to peak but the first place to start really in my mind is optimization is is load testing is a great way to find your bottlenecks right find out what's slow find out what fails fix it move that probably move that bottleneck somewhere else until you fix that until you're happy that you've got a reasonably consistent reliable platform uh, for the delivery of your application of your website um, what you can also be doing is thinking about optimizing for customer experience um, and often that will naturally give you benefits in your load test in terms of increasing efficiency and making better use of your bandwidth and, and the architecture you have in place. Um, where we focus in the past with our customers uh, tends to be around front end optimization. So reducing the load, right? Um, reducing image sizes, making sure the dimensions are correct for whatever device is viewing them, that kind right. of thing. But it also comes back to caching and things like that. Making sure you have the right caching in place can dramatically reduce the impact on, you know, uh, on your own system, your origin servers, or, or even a CDN and the cost associated with that, a content delivery network, if you've got one of those in place. So, uh, you know, um, it's worth considering that before you load test eight, as I said, to maximize the value of that test and make sure that your performance you would in live, um, uh, uh, but also to make sure um, that you're not making any changes that might affect your load test sure. after you've done the load test. So don't think sure. about optimization as a last thing before, yeah. before the event. Well, it's interesting because last, last Black Friday, we saw a lot of customers, um, a lot of people in the marketplace using que queuing tools, for example, to manage a load and, and handle things that way as a more maybe you know, a more cost effective way. I'm not sure. What's been your experience with queuing tools? Yeah, so, I mean, again, I mean, I, queuing tools and, and CDNs, um, you can almost put in the same place, and they're, they're kind of people see them as insurance policy, I guess, at the end of the day, right? So CDNs are great, and, and they've held, uh, they've they've managed some of the biggest peaks we've seen mm. uh, on the internet, um, Obama's inauguration and, and other things like that. They're all delivered um, often by CDNs, um, but often they're delivered without testing uh, and uh, they're delivered without any kind of understanding of the configuration of that CDN. And that's really where you get the maximum benefit. C CDNs need configuring just like your platform. That's really important. So you need to make sure you've got an eye on that, you know what you're doing again with your caching, if there's any auto optimization there, dynamic optimization, make sure that is set correctly. Uh, you know, talk to your CDN provider and, and understand from them what are the best best settings, the best thing you can do to make sure you have, your, you have the best experience, your customers have the best experience during that peak time. Queuing systems are really interesting. So um, last Black Friday, we saw a lot of queuing systems employed here um, as we kept watch on everything during during that period. Uh, and we kept an eye on social media while that was happening. Um, what was really clear while, while that was happening, while people were putting out these queuing systems, is that customers didn't like them, right? Many customers didn't like them, in fact. Uh, we saw lots of messages saying they didn't appreciate being put in queue, um, they didn't appreciate being delayed, um, you know, lots of commentary like that, um, which is really interesting. And, and, and I guess that, that really reinforces the point that, that uh, I think Alex will be making in a minute, which is about making sure that you're not only there during peak period, you're not only available to someone to make a purchase or, or interact, that actually you're performant that your website is delivered at speed so they can have the quickest, um, best interaction they mm -hmm. can have, have the best customer experience they can have, and of course, therefore, increase the chances of them spending more money or converting or doing whatever you Absolutely. need them to do. So, you know, fine insurance policy, um, we have tested them before, treat them as anything um, during this testing period. If you're gonna have it there in live, test it, make sure the queuing system works, um, but yeah, don't, don't treat it as a, uh, something that will solve all your problems. Right, no, no, no. cure all. That's, that's actually a great segue into the second deadly sin, sloth. Now, I like the picture of a sloth, which is why I put it on there, but obviously that's not quite what we're referring to. You need to make sure your website's fast in the day, as James has stated. A colleague Alex here, we did a really interesting survey a while back, and there were some interesting results that came off the back of that. Yeah, we did. So while most people consider that uh, going down on an event like Black Friday is a, is a disaster. We found in a survey with uh, several thousand consumers in the UK and the US, we found that uh, people find a website that's consistently slow more frustrating than one that's uh, that goes down once in a while. It, it kind of makes sense. I mean, it goes down, you hit the refresh button, and eventually it pops back up, and 
It's true. If it's slow, you're just going to be annoyed. It's true, but it's kind of counterintuitive, and it makes you think about um, the goals that people have in place when doing things like load testing. So the people who are in charge of keeping the lights on, basically, uh, you know, the ops team will generally be considered with keeping things up, making sure the website doesn't go down on the day. And it makes you realize that people in e-commerce or marketing might be better focused on things like uh, speed mm. because there will be an idea of a of an acceptable slowdown yeah um, and it's important to tie that in with uh, statistics that, or things or insights you can get from tools like uh, real customer insights that will tell you um, what the impact of a given slowdown will be on your conversion rate or your revenue so it's not just all about downtime it's also about speed and there are a few things you can do to make sure uh, you're fast on the day. One is to look at different user segments. Again, you can use a tool like Real Customer Insights to do that, to try to understand which user segments might be seeing uh, particularly slow load times and, and why. So for example, it could be it could be Android mobile users, for example. Uh, these will tend to be slower to process JavaScript. If you have a particularly JavaScript heavy page or site, uh, that could be a problem that you need to address. And it could be that there are particular pages that need to address it. And of course, on an event like Black Friday, you will have a whole host of uh, dedicated landing pages that you will need to optimize and that are particularly important to pay particular attention to because people will be visiting them with a clear cache for the first time. So not like a lot of pages on your site where people have a lot of the content cached already. These are entry points into the site. So it's really important to make them as light and mm. as fast as possible. And then you can do uh, slightly more advanced optimization techniques like prefetching content that you need for later pages in that customer journey um, to, to really make that journey as fast and as smooth as possible. Yeah, I, I know when I hit a page, for example, if I get a promotion link and I click on it, I go through, and if it's slow, I'm leaving. The yeah, thing is, once you get in there and if you have a decent experience, you find what you're looking, you start you know, adding things to a cart, you're a little more invested in the process, you're a little more tolerant of some pain, but that landing page, if it's slow, I mean, I've got the attention of a magpie, I'm out of there. Yeah, first impressions really count. And that's yeah. another reason why I think people should treat the, the, the home page as a special case as well and, and pay particular attention to optimizing that and really just load in only the content you need for that page. And it's, uh, you know, one of the main reasons for uh, slowdowns on a lot of sites, they're not doing anything particularly bad. It's just that there's a lot, a lot of stuff there that's not needed. Mm. Uh, redundant content, redundant scripts, redundant styles, uh, e images that are too big. It's normally simple stuff but people don't take the time to audit it, and, and now is the time. Right, that's brilliant. You mentioned Real Customer Insight as a tool to help understand what this is. What exactly does Real Customer Insight do to help you understand this stuff? This basically uh, tracks every visit to your site and will give you information about um, the experience that people get on that site. So how fast different pages loaded, uh, what are the most popular pages, um, what device that user was using to, to access that page. Um, really a whole host of things to give you an idea of the experience that that end user got. Because mm. um, it's, it's different. I mean, there, it, we, we talk about my, my website's this fast, but if you're you know a user connecting on a mobile device for a 3G versus a nice, fast new laptop on a, a fiber connection, you're gonna have a really different experience. Yeah, it's night and day. And the issue is very often uh, one of testing, so people test uh, their sites on um, fast yeah. connections, yeah. on good devices, and they don't bother to look at the very, very long tail of um, one of the thousands upon thousands of slower, lower end Android devices that may be accessed on a slow internet connection, and at the same time it's tempting to just to blame those devices as if it's not possible to optimize for them, but it is. Mm. You know, you, you, can make your, you can make your website fast on a on an old Android device, just as much you can, as you can on a, on a fast iPhone. Yeah, and what's interesting there, we had an interesting experience with one of our customers, a, a large retail customer, where we did some optimization work with them on Android devices, and all of a sudden, uh, we, we pushed out a, a release that basically shaved about three seconds off the load time for Android devices. All of a sudden, in the, in the analytics, we had 33,000 new Android sessions. Now, it, it wasn't like these things just, you know, all of a sudden it was fast and they came. They were there the whole time, but their experience was so slow that you know they weren't actually firing the analytics beacons. So that you know there, there was a lot of this sort of um, you know tip of the iceberg underneath the water iceberg sort of situation where you know we thought we were optimizing for this potential pool uh, of revenue to these, these particular users, but actually there's a whole bunch of them we weren't even seeing in our analytics. 
And it gets interesting then when you start looking at the, the stats you're getting from uh, whatever monitoring you're using, mm. um, because when you do something like that, you could even find that, say, average load times actually become slower <laughs> than you're expecting, because you've actually opened yourself up to a whole new market that you didn't have before. They're shifting um, that distribution. Yeah, they're shifting the distri distribution just because uh, they're there. They weren't, you know, they weren't even looking at your site before, and now now they're customers or potential customers. Yeah. That's interesting. That's interesting. I think that kind of leads on to uh, our, our next deadly sin, which is which is gluttony. Now, third parties, <laughs> James, yeah, you talk yeah. about this all the time. I mean, yeah, I do. These I really things do. are. Everybody talks about them. Yeah, everybody seems to hate them, but they're a necessary evil. So, uh, and they are a necessary evil, right? They're used for all sorts of things, from from tracking to advertising to remarketing. There's a, there's all sorts of reasons why you'd want you know third parties, third party tags uh, on your site. What we found with our customers though over over the recent years is that the number of people that can change, add, maintain, remove these tags has grown rapidly. Yeah. You know this used to be the domain of of dev. Yeah. Uh, development right so these guys and girls would be putting on uh, stuff onto the website and it would be in a, in a fashion that followed a strict process there'd be QA there'd be testing you know the whole works um, but of course that, that slows things down in the marketing world that slows things down in the e-commerce world um, so we saw over time marketing e-commerce folk um, digital folk gaining control of those third parties often through tag management or uh, systems or tag containers, right? Um, so now there's a whole breadth uh, of people, different roles within organization that can that can put tags on site, change them, et cetera, et cetera. And this opens up a whole lot of risk. Well, yeah, I mean, you're literally deploying code on a live platform with zero checks and balances. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I, I ran um, what we call the, the wall of pain in, in not our last event, but the one before now, just a year and a bit ago, uh, and I remember on that, probably 90% of what people were writing on that, because we got people over and gave them some market pens, got to write the things they find the most challenging in their business at that time. Most of it at that time was third parties. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it was shocking and a bit of an eye opener, to be honest with you. Um, but clearly one of the biggest risks. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, it's interesting, too, obviously, we, we kind of touched on the fact that you, you kind of lack of control. But the other part of it is, is that you really don't have sort of the insight into their inner workings that you have with your own code. And, and obviously, Black Friday holiday season, it's, it's going to be their peak too. You know, we talked about the whole thing with, with the uh, cloud computing with AWS, Microsoft, Azure. A lot of these third parties use that because it's a nice, easy, scalable option. Obviously, you know, they have the same constraints that you're going to be facing trying to pull instances down that day. And if one of those goes down, especially if it's a single point of failure, you know, it's going to be a real problem for you. Now, Alex, we, we've seen this before with some third parties where sites actually make these third party scripts actually a single point of failure in your experience what's the best way to avoid that i guess uh the obvious solution where available is to host that script locally if you're relying on a library that's hosted on a third party platform um okay generally speaking they're, they're pretty reliable um but you've basically just doubled the chances of, the, of something going down somewhere down the line so hosting that script locally will mitigate that, that risk to a degree. The other thing is you may have services that you just don't need all the time. Yeah. This is particularly true for uh, AB or multivariate testing services where you might, you might just decide to pause them uh, during a peak because these very often are um, single points of failure that, that will stop your site working if they fail or if they slow down. Um, because by almost by definition, they have to intervene to decide which version of a site to deliver to an end user. Um, so just, just Pausing them or taking them out is is one good option. I imagine that's true for like customer review stuff too. I mean, obviously, Absolutely. it's a totally different buyer on that day. Absolutely right. Yeah. So there's only a limited amount you can learn. Of course, there are things that you can only learn on on, on events like Black Friday. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, your priority is really to ensure that your customers get the best possible possible experience, um, rather than to gain intelligence um, and risk uh, bringing everything crashing down. Yeah. Um, the other thing to be aware of is that single points of failure may not occur exactly where you expect them to occur. So typically, we're looking at things like blocking synchronous scripts in the head of your document. But really, any third party can end up being a single point of failure. If you've got critical functionality or content that depends on uh, something like the onload event firing, then 
that's a single point of failure. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Very good point. Yeah, so it's funny you mentioned uh, MBT. Uh, we had a, a customer of ours that we dealt with um, in the past who actually were using one of their MBT provider platforms to deploy hotfixes. So you know, we, we're sitting here talking about e-commerce and marketing, having control and pushing things out. Developers aren't quite you know innocent either. They actually can use it as a, a way to work around development and release processes. So yeah, third parties are definitely something that's needed, but can be a world of pain if not managed and used correctly. Absolutely. Definitely. Let's move on to our next deadly sin, envy. Now, there's nothing worse than sitting there on the day, your site's on fire and your competitors are all humming along happily. One of the most important things we talk about is performance monitoring. So this is the clean, repeatable, synthetic baselines that give you an idea of how big your site is in terms of page weight, across key user journeys, specific pages. More importantly, it can be used to understand how your competitors are actually performing. Obviously, user perception is a huge part of speed, and if you have a customer that may be bouncing between yourself and several of your competitors, your experience needs to be as good, if not better, than any one of those competitors. And performance monitoring is fantastic at keeping an eye on that. Yeah, so I want to add to that, Drew, yeah, okay. if I can. So, I, you know, here's a, here's a thing you'll hear all the time, right, around this time of year. Um, but specific to monitoring, monitoring is not just for Christmas, right? It, it really is. <laughs> Uh, it, it should be there all the time, right? The things, the, the reasoning that you're applying, Drew, is great for, for Black Friday, and that's that's arguably when it matters most. But of course, you should be doing that all the time. That you know, and that's what monitoring is all about, right? That's why it's monitoring. But it's worth reinforcing that you know you can be doing this all the way up to Black Friday. You can be having an eye on your competitors all the time with that consistent, repeatable view. Um, and then, of course, what happens after Black Friday is also important. You know, and keep an eye on it. Don't let it go. Don't let all this hard work you've put in get lost. Build those those processes to use to stay ahead of your competitors uh, into you know the culture of your business and mm. continue to improve. Continue to keep it right because because often what I see is people do optimize, they get it right at, at, for for peak, and then and then it just goes wrong in the following months, right? Exactly. Yeah. So you know you just got to keep going. You've got to keep monitoring. You've got to keep an eye on this stuff. Yeah, that's a really really good point. Um, which kind of leads on to the next sin quite nicely. Now, obviously, if we're sticking to the theme of this, lust is the next deadly sin. But I was told by our legal team, I could not use the word lust. <laughs> I've just done it again. Uh, and let me tell you, when I did the stock image search for lust, let's just say this is probably a safer image here. I so that didn't go well. Through. We're going to go with ignorance. And I think it's an important one. We're making our own up, but it's applicable to our domain. So knowing how your site performs is massively important. We talked about it a few times throughout this webinar. Your site performance is often talked about as load time or you know, whether it's speed index, page load time, whatever metric you're using, as sort of an aggregate number for the whole site. The thing is, it's not ever a consistent experience for our users. You can access your website from a mobile phone, access from a tablet, a computer, different connection types, even different times of the day, and you're gonna get a vastly different experience. And it's really important for you to understand what your site behaves like at different times of day. And it's also more important to understand how your customers tolerate that performance. You know, if you have a site, for example, where a lot of your users are accessing from mobile devices, they may tolerate a somewhat slower experience. But even that is different depending on the operating system and the device they're accessing on. So it's really important using that tool that uh, Alex mentioned earlier, Real Customer Insights, to be able to get an understanding of how your actual user behavior is on the wild, in the wild on your site. Um, the other really cool thing about it as well, and we talked about this with the, the last step, Deadly Sin, is once you're capturing this, you've got this information, and you can start referring back to it as you build this culture of performance. And if you want to know how you performed next year at this time, you can reference back to that information and actually look and see, you know, how did we do? How do we how do we load? How do we perform? Spot problems, iterate, improve, and so on and so on. And it's not just Black Friday either. You know, we have a, a one of our customers who's a runs regular student nights, for example. And these student nights are massive activity. And it's really interesting because the typical consumer hits their site and they'll look at various different items, different sizes, different colors, put them in their car. You have a, a decent tail before they get to the checkout flow. What's really interesting on these student nights is the behavior is completely different. They'll hit maybe one page because they've been eyeing this pair of you know, shoes or this dress or you know this belt, this particular item that they're after. And instead of browsing across the whole site and spreading out the load, they hit the item page and they're bam, right into the resource intensive checkout flow. 
So secure connections, calls out to credit card processors, authentication servers, and it's understanding how customers are actually accessing your site at peak periods and knowing how that works and applying it to future demand that's really important. Ignorance is just definitely not an excuse. No, I, I totally agree. Uh, and it's, it's something we talk about a lot. It's that magic phrase that we always pull out that you cannot manage something that you don't measure, hmm. right? Um, and you measure, you mentioned different timing points then as well, whether it's speed index or total download duration. Look, you know, some are better than others and, and, and some are better for certain organizations, but as long as you're measuring something that gives you some indication, then that, you know, that's a start, right? So uh, again, it, complete ignorance is, is definitely a bad place to be. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, James. So let's move on to our next deadly sin. Avarice. Now, that's a bit of a twist. This is actually one you kind of want to embrace. It's all about maximizing conversions. So one of the key things that we can help you do, and this is a shameless product plug here, I'll be blunt front about it, but Real Customer Insights, the key thing that it does, along with our greater customer experience insights, is to take the technical behavior of your code, of your website, and tie that together with your business outcomes. And bringing those two things together really kind of creates this virtuous circle that enables you to provide a fast website that's reliable and up all the time. Now, all of that is to say a fast website gets you more conversions. And you think about if you're a clothing website, for example, if you have a faster site, we've seen that customers are more likely to consume more pages. That's an additional item on the order. Imagine if you had an extra accessory on every single item that you sold. That's a fantastic increase in revenue. It's those little things that all start to add up. We're talking here about tenths of a second, hundreds of a second. It doesn't seem like a lot, but if you start scaling it out over every user experience and you actually start seeing the numbers of your users, and if they consume that one additional page, how much more incremental revenue you're likely to make, um, this is one you actually do want to embrace, frankly. Yeah, I totally, absolutely agree with that. Um, it, it's so important to make the connection, to you know, uh, to have that understanding, hmm. uh, because it's what this is all about, right? Absolutely. Okay, so moving on to the next deadly sin, we have pride. As we all know, pride comes before a fall. Um, and in our case, this is a deadly sin because uh, a lot of people involved in putting everything together for Black Friday um, will think that everything they've done is awesome and perfect. And in many cases, they may be right. But in some cases, this will lead to the notion that it doesn't need testing. So is this, is this the elephant in the room? This oh, is the elephant nah, in the room. I knew you were going to try stuff. <laughs> well. This is absolutely the elephant in the room. Um, but of course, um, everything does need testing. Whether that's uh, functional testing with the cloud functional and, and, and AI, or uh, performance testing to understand how those systems behave uh, under pressure. There is always that temptation to skip the step because you believe that you've got everything right. Um, you won't have done. Yeah, I, I can add some experience to that. So being in this business for more than a decade, yeah, <laughs> thanks, man. Um, it's quite clear to me that, that you know, that most people actually, whether they believe they have or they haven't got it right, haven't got it right. Um, I think, you know, you're probably looking at the 80-20 rule um, when you're looking at the amount of people that, that um, get surprises um, versus those that don't. The unknown unknowns. Uh, absolutely that, right? Absolutely that. And, and especially when you're using such, you know, things like egg, egg plant load testing, which tests your entire stack, um, then, you know, there are parts of your site that you may not have even, or actually you may not even looked at, yeah. let alone tested, may not, and may not have changed for a long time, right, in your perceivable eyes. Um, but of course, providers change. We talked about third parties as connectivity providers can change your algorithms. There's all sorts of interesting no, things. That nothing stands on the way. Exactly, nothing stands still. So, you know, just testing parts is not going to work. You need to test the complete thing uh, and you need to be ready, uh, ultimately, um, for something not to work, uh, at least during the testing phase and the load mm -hmm. testing phase, right? And that's what it's all about, mitigating that risk. Fantastic. Well, I think that covers our seven deadly sins. I think it does. So let's wrap things up here. So in summary, I think this one pretty much covers a lot of what we talked about. Prepare, prepare, prepare. You, know, you, you can't rock up to Black Friday and holiday peak and just hope everything's going to be all right. You, you've got to get your ducks in a row. Yep, totally agree. How do you do that? Insight. Great. Helps you focus, tells you where to, the most important things to focus on, how to maximize your revenue. You can't do that just guessing. Yeah, I mean, uh, just to add to this, we, we're not talking data. 
we're not necessarily talking information. Mm. We're genuinely talking insight. Yeah. Something that provides you uh, with enough information for actionable change at the end of the day, right? So um, something you can act on, uh, which is great. Uh, we have products that can provide that right out of the box. And of course we have services that we can wrap around those products as well that can deliver that to you independently. So really cool, really cool stuff. Literally statements like you need to improve your product landing pages because they are 25% slower than the rest of your site. And that is costing you 5,000 pounds a day. Absolutely. Something like exactly that. Exactly yeah. that. Yeah. Queuing is insurance, not primary plan. I think that's uh, an overarching statement. It's good to have it in there to fall back on, but you definitely don't want to rely on it as your main course of mitigation. Absolutely not. So <laughs> social media blew up yeah. uh, over last Black Friday with queuing systems. Clearly people weren't happy. Um, well, it's, you okay. know, it's not like people are emotional and rational on social media. Well, of course not, indeed. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So hopefully we won't see much of that next year, but hey, you never know. Don't wait. I think this is probably the biggest one. You know, we, we're sitting here in August. Black Friday is not that far away. Holiday peak is not that far away. And, and frankly, you know, there's no time in the present to get started on this journey of, of performance. Um, it, don't wait. And don't forget, you're not alone on this. We're here to help you literally through every step of the way from the identification of what you want to target, the planning for optimization, load testing, performance testing, functional testing, all the way through to deployment live and so on. We're here to help. Please get in touch and we'll take you on this journey and have a successful holiday peak and going forward. So thank you very much again. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to tune in. Please feel free to get in touch and have a great day.